the American middle class is crumbling. And let me just put it this way, folks. It clearly does not seem like the federal government under this administration even gives a crap about what's happening to the millions of us. Sorry for the language, but that's how some people see it. Here's what Jake Sullivan, the national security advisor, had to say about sending even more taxpayer money outside of our country. President Biden's approach, which was high level private diplomacy, has actually generated results. It has generated the introduction of a substantial and growing amount of humanitarian assistance to civilians in Gaza, the uh, exit of thousands of foreign nationals, including American citizens from Gaza, and the first pause in the fighting since the conflict began and the release of the first of, of a set of hostages, 50 hostages. All of that has been the product of presidential engagement, private engagement, hard diplomacy. That's the course that President Biden set us on, and that is but, the course that is delivering But Jake, just right to now. be very clear, should we take his words that it would be a worthwhile thought to mean that the president is open to signing legislation that would provide aid to Israel that comes with conditions? I thought the president really couldn't have been clearer when he answered the question. He acknowledged the idea, and then he said, uh, but the way that I have conducted yes. our diplomacy is that this a is yes, what is Jake? actually producing is that results. A, is that's he what he's done it? so far, and that's what he's going to do. Is he open to it? Again, he is going to continue to focus on what is going to generate results. And as he said in the press conference quite clearly, and as you can see from the fact that for the last two days we've seen hostages released, the approach that he is taking, direct presidential diplomacy behind closed doors with the Israelis and with our Arab partners, that's what's generating the kinds of results that we're seeing right now. That's the course that he's on. Hmm. Actions that generate results, huh? How much have we, and I'm saying we because, you know, this is taxpayer money, but how much have we spent on the Ukraine-Russia war again? Do you guys remember? Like billions, right? Have we seen good results? The U.S. has announced another $325 million in military aid for Ukraine as the Ukrainian military continues its counteroffensive. The aid includes more armored vehicles. Russia, without offering any evidence, claims it has destroyed 25 to 30 percent of Ukraine's foreign supplied hardware. Ian Lee reports from southern Ukraine. This cell phone video shows a damaged Ukrainian armored vehicle. More will be needed. On Tuesday, Russian President Vladimir Putin boasted to journalists that his forces have destroyed 25 to 30 percent of foreign supplied equipment. While on the same day, the Pentagon announced a new $325 million aid package. In terms of this package, this is something that meets the priorities of the Ukrainians. Um, armor, artillery, uh, air defense, these are all priorities that they've laid out. Part of the package includes Stryker and Bradley armored fighting vehicles, but the air defenses are also desperately needed. Tell you what, do you think that within these past few years, do you think that your taxpayer money has been used wisely to produce results for the American people? Comment a quick yes or no down below on that one. And while you guys are at it, smash the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. But yeah, what is it about asking government officials something just as simple as a yes or no question and then having them talk about something completely different? You know what I mean? Like these politicians never answer the question that's asked of them. Like, they could be wearing a white tie and if you ask them are you wearing a white tie they would answer like well it's kind of hard to comprehend the spectrum of colors when we talk about my tie but what i think is important is that i put on my pants today my shoes are shiny and i'm here to provide results for the american people meanwhile you never got an answer but you guys get the picture right it's absolutely ridiculous don't get me wrong though i've said this time and time again as my stance when it comes to helping people out all right there's nothing wrong with helping others i do it every day but there's a huge difference when it comes to our government but I ensure that the people around me, my loved ones, they come first. The same can't be said for the federal government as many claim that the American people are on their last list of priorities. Do you guys agree with that? Now it's actually gotten to a point where a huge majority of Americans don't believe in the American dream anymore. I mean, look at this. Only 36% of Americans seem to think that the dream is alive and well, and that working hard will actually get you ahead of the rest. Come to think of it, what is the American dream nowadays? Is it being able to afford a house on one job? Is it about being able to save up for a rainy day and still be able to buy what you both need and want? Is it the freedom to say what you want without fear of judgment and suppression? Like these are things that a lot of folks don't even see now. And you have to address it, right? Why is this the norm now? Why does it feel as if the weight is on our shoulders and that our leaders instead want to reward our hard work with even more problem? The middle class was once a symbol of the American dream, but the American middle class today paints quite a different picture. 
being middle class, I feel like you're really just in between a rock and a hard place. You know, you're in a spot where everyone's like, hey, you're doing better than, you know, low class. You're doing great. You should be fine. Um, and you're underneath the people who are actually doing fine. It was at least a secure category. Your kids would go to a school that you felt at least okay about. You probably own a car or two and you'd own your own home and you could pay for your kids' college educations. So there were certain kinds of assumptions around being a middle class person that have sort of shattered. When people are asked about being middle class, they frequently are less likely to say so. And more people now urge the pollsters to suggest that they're working class. So I think that the many people who maybe in prior years would have thought of themselves as middle class now no longer think of themselves that way. Let's just look at the middle class here, okay? The Social Security Administration recently released the national wage statistics for last year and in a word, the numbers, they don't look good. The median wage earner was only able to bring in $40,847.18 in 2022, roughly translated to a real world number, and that's around $3,400 a month before taxes. Now, I wanna ask you guys, do you think that you could live a middle class lifestyle on $3,400 a month? And I want you to think about the numbers that you're paying like when you go to Walmart, Target, Kroger's, all right? Get all these details in and then come back to the question, is that enough for middle class households? As of this point, the national median price for renting, it's about $1,978 monthly. So that leaves you around $1,400. And then you take into consideration groceries, electricity bills, water, clothing, and well, how are you gonna balance that? Millions of Americans have a Band-Aid solution though, but if you think about Band-Aid solutions, know that these are quick fixes that can end with long-term problems. And new data shows Americans are digging themselves deeper into credit card debt, which is now hitting an all-time high. For the first time ever, the total credit card debt across the U.S. has topped $1 trillion. That's a $154 billion spike from this time last year and the largest increase in more than two decades. That's right, people are swiping left and right, and this is only gonna get worse because, I mean, what happens when the credit runs dry? How will people be able to afford things? And here's the beauty of all of this. And know that they actually air this on national TV, but the White House with their press secretary, Corinne Jean-Pierre, she actually said that the Thanksgiving we had was cheaper compared to two years ago. And sure, she's right. But if she went back just one more year and then came back to us with the prices back then, would she still be able to tout these numbers? This Thanksgiving, we have a lot to be thankful for. While inflation caused by the pandemic and Russia's war continues to be a challenge, we have seen important progress. And as we start preparing our Thanksgiving meals, grocery inflation is at its lowest level in over two years, with prices for eggs, milks, bacon, and fresh veggies lower than last year. In fact, According to the American Farm Bureau, the cost of a Thanksgiving dinner fell this year. Hey, you heard it there. The White House press secretary is saying that Americans should feel good. Uh, Thanksgiving deeper, dinner is cheaper this year. The American Farm Bureau says the average classic Thanksgiving dinner for 10 people will be $61.17, down from the record high in 2022. But that's still 25% higher than 2019 pre-pandemic. Now, with all that, do you agree that the American middle class is no more? That it's a dying breed? Or is the White House now starting to make sense with all these amazing numbers? Either way, the last say is yours. So make sure you guys let me know what you're thinking down in the comment section down below. And before I go, I want to thank you guys for the love. Thanks for liking the video. And I'll see you guys on the next one.